I married Joe. What a girl, what a world, what a life. Oh, I married Joe. What a mind, love is blind, what a wife. Joan Davis. With Jim Backus in I chair through this door, dragging it down from the attic on my back. Wow. Put it over here, dear. Huh? Right over here, honey. Oh. Do you think Janet will like the room? Oh, she ought to. You've been fussing around here all morning. You know, I haven't seen Janet since she was just... Fred! Don't sit on the chair, dear. Why not? Well, I just fluffed up the cushion for our guest. Oh, love her. Just because a 16-year-old daughter of a former associate of mine is coming to spend a week with us, there's no reason to change our whole way of... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Honey, Janet is no ordinary girl. And I want to make an impression on her. After all, for the past seven years, since her folks passed away, she's been living abroad with her aunt. Well, I'm aware of that. I am the executor of the estate. Well, I know you are, dear. But what I meant was that, well, if she's been living abroad all these years, she's probably very worldly and used to the best. Look, I even brought out all my perfumes. Yes, I suppose Janet has been around a bit. Italy, Germany, England, France. Paris? I suppose so. Gee, Paris. Gay Perry. Affaire Jacques, affaire Jacques. Well, look all right. Oh, well, of course, Joan. You should probably be wearing a Parisian model. Maybe I better change... Oh, my... come, Joan. <laughs> I'm Janet Whitmore. Are you sure? Oh, well, yes, dear. Uh, come in. Well, uh, I'm Mrs. Stevens, and uh, this is the judge. Hello, Janet. Last time I saw you, you were just a little... Uh... Yes, that's... Well, here you go. And I'll take your coat, dear. Thank you. Well, I'm certainly happy that you're going to visit us. Thank you. And I want to hear all about you and all about your trip. Tell me, uh, were there any celebrities on board? I don't think so. Yes, we were delighted when we got the letter from your aunt asking us if you could stay here until she arrives. But uh, how come you didn't wait and come back with her? Oh, Aunt Margaret had parties and things, and my term was finished at school. She doesn't like me around, I guess. You mean you don't live with your aunt? No, I never have. Oh, except for vacation. But then she's never home much anyway. I wonder what girls' school I'll go to here. Well, don't look so unhappy, dear. I'll bet I know what the trouble is. You miss your boyfriend, right? Boyfriend? I don't have any boyfriend. You don't? No, I guess I never had much chance to meet any boys. They kind of scare me. Well, it's such a nice way to be frightened. <laughs> well, honey, you must be awfully tired after your trip. I'll show you up to your room. Yeah, we'll, uh, I'll bring the bags right up, Janet. Don't worry. It's right up here. <laughs> no boyfriends, huh? We're going to have to do something about that. <laughs> Did she eat her lunch? Yeah, but the poor kid was so tired she could hardly eat. She's taking a little nap. No, Joan, I just feel awful about that girl. No home life. She's such a shy, frightened little thing. Yeah, but a lot can happen in a week. All she needs is a rip-snorting, jitter-bugging, red-blooded American boy to show her life can be beautiful. <laughs> and no time like the present. Now, let's see. Uh, Gladys's boy, he's a dog. Oh, Joan, Joan, use your head. Well, it's much easier with my finger. <laughs> Be serious. 
even if you tricked Gladys' son into taking her out, he, he wouldn't like her and he'd show it. Janet is a little ugly duckling. I never thought of that. <laughs> How about Harold Miller? He's a little ugly drakeling. Harold Miller, is he the one that wears the big tortoiseshell glasses who likes worms and spiders? Yeah, and you make him sound so romantic. No, I doubt if that would work out. He's as shy as Janet is. Besides, Frank Miller told me his kid doesn't like girls. Only worms and spiders. Well, Harold doesn't see too well. Maybe we could introduce Janet as a girl spider. <laughs> Look, Fred. Harold probably suffers from the same thing that Janet does. Frank's his stepfather, and, well, Harold's always resented him. That's why he's so shy and introverted. Believe me, they'll make a wonderful... Uh, well, Harold is so... Uh, and Janet is... So, so, and their glasses match. But I'm not used to boys, Mrs. Stevens. Besides, they don't like me. Boys, what do they know? They know they don't like me. I wear glasses. So does Harold. I wear braces on my teeth. So does Harold. Say, you two ought to get along just fine. Oh. That's Harold. Gee, maybe I better... Now you stay right where you are. Hello, Harold. Hello, Mrs. Stevens. I'm here. Yes, you are, aren't you? Well, come in. I want you to meet Janet. Uh, Janet, uh, this is Harold. Hi. Hi, uh, Harold. This is Janet. Hi. Well, come on, let's sit down, shall we? <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Here we are. I fixed you some lemonade. And here's some records for you to play and you can dance. Well, I've got about a half hour shopping to do. Oh, but Mrs. So I'll Stevens... I'll see you later. Have fun. Oh, but Mrs. Stevens, what about me? Uh, you have fun, too. <laughs> Modern generation, they sure work fast. <laughs> Harold, the reason I ask you over here this afternoon for a private talk is, uh, well, uh, man to man, I need your help. Me help you, Judge? But how? Well, you wouldn't be helping me, really. It's, uh, it, it, it's Janet. You see, she's new here, uh, sort of alone. Well, you'd help her by uh, being uh, nice to her. You know, taking her dancing, movie, picnics. You know, Harold. Well, gee, I like Janet all right, but well, girls scare me. Harold, did it ever occur to you that maybe Janet is just as scared of boys? Really? Sure, she's dying to be your girlfriend. It's just that she's scared. It's up to you to take the initial step. In fact, I had the, the same trouble with Mrs. Stevens when I was your age. You did? Yes, 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 I, I, I did. Um, she was uh, just as shy as, as Janet is, uh, and it was up to me to break the ice. Never will forget it. The night of the junior prom in the high school gym. <laughs> she was a new girl and didn't have a date. <laughs> She was such a shy, frightened little thing. And you could tell she just learned to dance and wasn't very sure of herself. But when I looked at her, I knew that underneath that shyness was a wonderful girl. Fortunately, I was kind of a smooth guy in high school. 
Once I broke the ice, everything was fine. It was? <laughs> yes, Janet, it's time we had a woman-to-woman -woman talk, you and I. What about, Mrs. Stevens? Well, uh, uh, about boys. You like boys, don't you? I don't know. I told you before, I've never known any. Oh, I don't believe it. But I like Harold. I think he's handsome. I believe it. Uh, look, honey, uh, what I'm trying to say is that, well, it's perfectly natural for a girl your age to like a boy, to want to be with him and go for walks with him and dance with him, and, well, boys feel the same way about girls. Do you think Harold feels that way about me? Well, of course he does. Then why doesn't he show it? Because he's scared like you. Yes, you see, he's too shy to take the initiative. So? You take it. Me? Yes, you. Well, oh, look, honey, now, somebody's got to break the ice. Uh, in fact, well, I, I, I had the same problem with Judge Stevens when I was your age. You did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it was the night of the junior prom in the high school gym. He was a new boy and didn't have a date. Oh, he was such a shy, frightened little thing. And you could tell he was just learning to dance and wasn't very sure of himself. Well, but when I looked at him, I knew that underneath that shyness was a wonderful boy. Fortunately, I was kind of a slick chick in high school. And that's how it was, Janet. Uh, once I broke the ice, everything was just fine. You mean I should walk right up to Harold and do the asking? And no time like the present. Listen, he's down in the kitchen with the judge. And so why don't you go downstairs and put on a record and ask Harold to dance? All right, I'll do it. Good girl. There she is. Now go to it. But, but, but I, I... She's even got the music on. Just walk right up and say, would you care to dance? Would you care to dance? <laughs> All right, I'll do it. <laughs> Good boy. I wonder where 
Whatever Janice can be, I'm worried, Brad. She said she was going for a walk, didn't she? Yeah, but who walks for three hours? Now, look, Joan, don't get so upset. We've tried to help. Heavens knows we've tried. Well, what do we do? Forget the poor kid? Suppose she grows up to be an old maid. Well, how would you like to be all alone in the world? Too shy even to get a husband. You wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it even if I got a husband. <laughs> now, don't get literal, smarty pants. Oh, lover, it's hopeless. Oh, maybe you're right. Hello, everybody. Hi. Wow. Oh, I see you got to know one another after all. Well, how? When? Where? Where? Well, I was walking along feeling lonesome, and... And I was walking along feeling lonesome. And then we met, and... and we got talking, and... and... then he kissed me. I knew sooner or later he'd make the switch from worms and spiders. Well, good boy. And then she kissed me. Good girl. So, now we're gonna get married. Good boy. My Lord. What do you say? What? He said we're going to get married. And right away... We're in love. Uh, uh, now, wait a minute, kids. Uh, it's all right to make up for lost time, but let's not exceed the speed limit. Well, they aren't serious. They're just teasing us. <laughs> aren't you? No, we're not. No. All my life, I felt like, like I didn't belong anywhere. And now I do. I belong with Harold. And I belong with Janet. Look, kids, uh, I can tell you go for each other by the way your glasses are steamed up. But enough is enough. I love Harold, and I'm not going to leave him and go away to school. So we're going to get married? Yes. Looks like we were too successful. Uh, I better call Harold's mother. Oh, Mrs. Stevens, I already told her. You did? Well, well, what'd she say? Didn't she say it was ridiculous and impossible and to stop this nonsense at once? She didn't say a word. She didn't? No. She and Father were having dinner and she fainted. <laughs> well, what did your father say? Nothing. When we left to come here, he was too busy pulling her out of the noodle soup. <laughs> it's Harold's folks. Look, Harold, Harold, uh... Take Janet down to the drugstore and, and buy her a soda and, and go, go out through the kitchen. Oh, thank you. Come on, lover. All right, lover. <laughs> lover? <laughs> oh, hello, Frank. Oh, hello, Brad. Oh, hello, Brad. Yes, oh, I know. Uh, well, please come over and sit, sit down, down just a minute, dear. But, Joan, do you realize what's going on between Harold and that girl who's staying in your house? Yes, they want to get married. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Very funny. But what isn't so funny is that they mean it. Yes, I'm afraid they do. Now, look, we've got to... Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Let's discuss this sanely and, and, and calmly. Now, Brad, I insist that you ship that girl away before Harold makes a fool of himself. Now, just a minute, Frank. You're not talking about puppy dogs. You're talking about people. Young people, perhaps, but nevertheless people. Two frightened, shy kids who, who suddenly have discovered something very deep and, and very beautiful in each other. And if you destroy it, well, then you destroy them. You tell him, lover. Oh, he's so smart, that man. Uh, go ahead, Your Honor. Oh, now, look, Brad, I'm not going to sit here and listen to a lecture on that sort Frank, please. You realize what he's saying? Yes, and he's making sense. Go ahead, Brad. Well, we've got to find a way to show them that young kids their age just don't get married. But the most important thing is, let it be their decision. These kids... Just because Parker's department store offers him a job for $20 a week, he's ready to get married. And that's it. What's it? The $20. We'll show them what marriage will be like living on $20 a week. Why, with today's prices, it should disillusion anybody. But do you think that you can do it? Now, don't worry. I know just how to do it. And you uh, think you can support Janet on $20 a week, huh? Oh, gosh, I can try, can't I? <laughs> Look, Harold, I don't think that you're the type of a boy that would want to lead a nice girl like Janet into a life of struggle and hardship, would you? No, but uh, I... Brad, give me $20, dear. Yeah. Two fives and ten singles. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Here you are. What's it for? 
That's your salary from Parker's department store. You just got paid. Now, you and Janet are sitting in your tiny little apartment, the cheapest one you can find. Suddenly, there's a knock on the door. Well, how do you do? Oh, how do you? How do you get it? Boss, boy, boss, I'm Eustace P. Abernathy, your landlord. Come for the rent, boy. Hope you got it. Sure hate to throw you out on a night like this. Too nice out. More fun when it's raining. <laughs> oh, there we are. Uh, that'll be $10 for the week, boy. Uh, these two fives will be fine. Mm, good day, boy. <laughs> Suddenly, there's another knock on the door. Harcourt. Cosgrove Harcourt's the name. Mr. Miller, here's my card. Uh, I represent the Interstate Insurance Company, and I understand that you were recently married, and I wonder if you have enough life insurance. Life insurance? You mean you don't have any? In, in case of accident, or if you were <laughs> suddenly called, that you would leave the little widow destitute? Now, I have here some very, very fine policies. Uh, in case of sudden departure, it pays your widow $10,000 plus car fare to your funeral. <laughs> Doesn't that just sound tempting? Well, yes, but I... Uh, yes, well, that will be exactly $9 a month. Yes, indeedy. Well, good day. Good day, Mr. Miller. Oh, well, he's only got $1 left. Isn't that a shame, Brad? Well, how is he going to pay for groceries and stuff like that? Mm, probably got a loan on the furniture. He did? Well, has he been able to keep up his payments on the loan? Oh, of course not. Well, in that case, uh, will you join me, Sam? Well, I'd love to, Max. Uh, here we are. <laughs> The, we're from the Acme Loan Company. Uh, you ain't kept up the payments, so uh, we're taking the furniture. Uh, right, Sam? Yeah, that's right, Max. Yeah, you know, Hey, Sam, uh, why do kids get mad anyway when they can't afford her? Uh, crazy kids. Go figure kids today, Max. Go figure. You can say that again, Sam. Go figure. Uh, you mind getting up, sister? Yeah, come on, Buster. Out of the way, do you mind, Buster? Hey, Max. Go figure, kid, sir. Go figure. Tell me. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah. Cattersburg. What? Terrible. Yeah. Yeah, go figure, kids, today, Sam. Go figure. Go figure. Help me with this, will you, Sam? You had a casual table. Never mind, Mrs. Stevens. I see what you mean. I know you're fooling and all, but still proves how little $20 a week really is. Look, I've only got a dollar left. $20 doesn't go very far, does it? Oh, but that doesn't mean that you and Janet can't go on caring for each other. And, well, maybe someday, who knows? Sure, someday, when you can afford to take care of little Janet. I don't know what all this fuss about money is. Really, I don't. Harold and I won't need money. Hey, what are you talking about? Yes, what are you talking about? Why, Judge Stevens, as executor of my father's will, you should be familiar with its provisions. Holy mackerel. <laughs> well, clause 3, paragraph 8, at such times as Janet gets married, she is to receive the sum of $300,000. $300,000? $300, Good boy. <laughs> that Harold. You know, underneath, he's quite a boy. He sure is. The way he stood up and said, Janet, I love you, but you'll have to wait till I earn $300,000 to match yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some chance of that. But the important thing is that they were both allowed to work out their own problems and neither one of them was hurt. And now that they've loosened up, there's hope for both of them. Oh, I'm so happy I could bust. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I'm just crazy about you. Hey, I just remembered. Hmm? Hey, Max, gotta move back that furniture. Uh, I'm too tired. You do it. By myself? Why? Because, uh, uh, Max, this went out of business. Uh, if you want to talk to him about it, uh, 
Uh, she'll be in the bedroom waiting for a good night kiss. Go <laughs> figure. Seen in tonight's cast were Ann Whitfield, Leon Tyler, Florence Ravenall, and Frank Fenton. Ooh,